Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Ashley Ann, who is in Miami, normally in Little Rock, Arkansas, but is in Miami today. How are you doing, Ashley Ann? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, Ashley Ann is a professional speaker, social media strategy, business builder, award winning event designer, educational technologist. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm tired just reading that out. That's a lot of different things. What's that? I said, I'm a, and I'm a TEDx speaker now. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank Absolutely. And uh, and we're going to we're going to talk about uh, what we're going to talk really about is relationship building today and and how important that is to sales and business and how that can differentiate in 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 success the difference between success uh, and not success uh, and I think one of the things that we have seen uh, Ashian over the last while especially the pandemic you know pre pandemic it was starting to happen but certainly the, during the pandemic it definitely accelerated and that's that people, I think, are really craving human relationships, you know, regardless of whether it's personal relationships or business relationships, they want to connect on some kind of human level, because I think we're all kind of, uh, while technology is a great enabler of that, here we are on Zoom, um, but some of the technology has been used to kind of almost remove the human element, and and that's been a mistake. Absolutely. Um and I, I honestly think a lot of us took human connection and interaction for granted. Honestly, um, I can personally speak. I, I believe that I did. I never really thought that I would see a time where we would be forced to disconnect from one another, even like close family and friends. And so you really realize um, how communal we are as a people. Yeah, and, and uh, absolutely. And I think that the the efforts uh, that were made as i said to kind of take the human out of it i mean we've all had the experiences of of trying to trying to communicate with the company that sends you all over the place and you never get to to talk to a human being um, and how frustrating that is and how at odds that is often with the if you go onto that company's website, they probably have customer centric, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. on their mission or vision statement. But your but your experience is so different. Absolutely, um, especially and this is my thing. I'm a big proponent of automation, but I, I don't think everything should be 100 percent automated. Right. And I think there's a line that maybe people are missing. I mean, I get that as entrepreneurs and business owners that we're all really busy, but there's a certain um, there's a certain spark and there's a certain connection that comes with human interaction. And I think for a very long time, it was undervalued and people became so focused on sales that they forgot that sales are really driven by service, right? And how someone feels about your company and the experience, like 80% of customers that leave businesses is not because they weren't the newest or the most inventive. It's not because they didn't have the best product. It's not even because they made a mistake. It's because they don't like how that interaction with that company made them feel. And so I think, you know, somewhere in the sauce, a lot of people have forgotten we're dealing with people and we need to make sure people feel good whenever they have an experience with our with our company, whether it's through social media or retail, you know, direct to direct, direct sales, you know, at a checkout counter. Yeah, and, and actually a great point. Uh, I just wanted to come back on on the automation because, yeah, we're big believers in automation in, in our CRM. We have an, a workflow automation engine. Uh, but to your point, we're we're all about automating things to number one take away routine and road tasks or whatever things mm -hmm. that distract uh, and that don't need to be done by a person and, and also things that make it more efficient for the customers but to my mind mm -hmm. the beauty of automation is that it frees up time for the relationship piece so it shouldn't actually take away it shouldn't take away from the relationship it actually should enhance it because you have more time to concentrate on the on the relationship element Absolutely. And I, I feel like somewhere in there, people started to think, well, if I use this automation, I don't have to deal with people. So at this point, um, 
I speak to thousands of small business owners a week and we do like small group coaching and things like that. And I cannot explain to you the amount of people that have come to me over, I'll say the past 18 months and they're like, well, yeah, I want a coaching program or yeah, um, I want to launch a successful digital product or yeah, I want a membership, but I don't want to deal with the people. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, well, how can I make all this money doing this and not deal with the people? And I'm like, well, you should probably find something else to sell, right? Maybe just sell a physical product, maybe do something that's retail based because at the end of the day, if you're going to build out, you know, that type of product or that type of successful business is successful because of the people. Yeah, and, and that's that's fascinating, you know, that uh, it, it's a fascinating uh, approach you know, to to want to do that, but not want to deal with any people. Yeah, you yeah. can find you can find ways of doing that for sure. There's probably businesses that have lend themselves to that. But overall, I mean, the vast majority, as I said, the pendulum is swinging way back towards more engagement and more human engagement. Uh, and so uh, to your point, I don't think you're going you're in the right business if you're looking to sell but not really engage with anyone. Yeah, and I, I love your point when you said that the automation is supposed to be an enhancement, and that's true. The automation is to open up the doorway maybe to segmenting your clients so you can send them really valuable information or find out what they need. So whenever you actually reach out to them through a discovery call or just a nurturing email or something like that, you're giving them highly valuable information, which is in turn, right, going to help with your ultimate conversion. And so, you know, automation is used is great for reminders. It's great to send out products, um, lead magnet offers, right? Let people know about sales. Um, like you said, all those mundane tasks, right? Maybe mass DMs, things like that. But, you know, once you get that, it's like, okay, now I've opened up the door to be able to communicate and build a relationship with someone. And so now let's cultivate this so that I have the new customer, the return and the repeat customer, and then the customer that gives me the increased transactions, right? Because those are three ways that your businesses grow. And one of the th other things that you mentioned earlier that I wanted to come back to as well is the idea that it is a it's an it's the customer experience is the whole experience of dealing with, you know, regardless of whether it's a small solopreneur, small business, large business, it doesn't matter uh, when you interact with them pre-sales or you interact with them on social media or you interact with them during the sales process or later on when you're a customer, maybe a customer support, if you're if that experience isn't consistent and you know uniformly a positive experience, uh, then it only takes one part of that chain, one weak link in that chain to undo everything else. Absolutely. And it, this is the thing that's interesting about people, right, as far as human behavior. Um, and I do a lot of reading about, like, when it comes to, like, how our brains work and um, psychology and sociological stuff and all of that. I'm, like, fascinated by it. Um, but, you know, humans have the propensity to actually focus on the negative more so than the positive. So, you know, you a customer could have a great experience with your company. They may tell a handful of people. Maybe they may not even tell anybody. Just, they may just walk away satisfied. Right. But if you make someone angry, if you get them ticked off, if they've had some type of negative interaction, if they feel disappointed, oh, they're telling everybody. Right. They're going on Facebook. They're getting on Instagram. They're getting on TikTok. They're calling the BB. <laughs> they're doing everything that they can to let people know that they're dissatisfied with your company in some way. And so literally you know, I think people have lost sight of that. And then even using your automated systems to follow up, right, and create that better experience for the customers after, right? A lot of people, they just kind of think it's done once the sale is over. And no, there's still an opportunity for you to work with that customer through referrals, through refill and upsells, for you to work with them through continued, right, education, correlating products, um, even, you know, grabbing testimonials from them that you can circulate out to other people in your community. Um, so it's, it's really important to make sure, you know, we're looking at like the entire interaction with the customer. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, as you said, you want them to be repeat customers. You want them to be evangelists for you. If they have a good experience, they continue to have a good experience, then the chance of them doing that obviously, obviously go up over time. But as you said, it only takes one little snafu for them to go on the negative. So it's just a fact of life. It's a fact of human nature. You can either, you know, deal with it as we're talking about, or you can ignore it at your peril. Yeah. 
hopefully everyone that's listening is choosing to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would hope that they would make the wise decision to deal with it. So what have you seen uh, over the over the last while? Um, what have you uh, have you seen some creative ways of deepening and, and building relationships with with customers? Um, so I know that this may sound a little cliche, but it's really true. Y'all social media is a gateway. Um, the beautiful thing about social media is one, it allows you to meet many. Um, I think a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs, sometimes you get tied up and you get exhausted because you're on a one-to-one -one model, right? The beautiful thing about social media, you literally can meet a thousand to 10,000 people a day through your content, through your hashtags, through micro influencer campaigns, through sharing the content on other pages. And then once you have their attention, you give them an invitation, right, to come and connect to you. So to start the process of building that relationship. So now we're going to build the list so you can send them, you know, their <laughs> initial lead magnets. You can send them awesome, um, valuable content inside of the emails. You can answer their questions, invite them to discovery calls. So I think one of the most creative things that I'm seeing is people actually meeting people on social media with value-based content. Um, even if it's coming through live streams or reels and saying, hey, if you want to stay connected to me, come and join my club, come and join my free membership, come into my app and get this, you know, course or be a part of our community. Um, I think that's probably like the most creative and the most effective way that I've seen to build up a company and build up a huge buying base of people and convert them really quickly. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think there's a couple of things there that you mentioned that I also just wanted to underline. The first thing you said about the content and about valuable content. And I and I think this is a critical, critical, critically important piece because there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of garbage mm -hmm. content. Sometimes people think, oh, if I just fling this link or this piece of content over there, I'm adding value. Well, if if it's not a if it's not a good piece of content if it's not relevant then you're not you're just you're just like you know painting by numbers at that stage, um, and I, and I think that that's the key point is if you're going to do it do it well because the world doesn't need more crappy content. Right, and I, I wanted to give a few examples of value based content if that was okay because yeah. I know people are always talking about valuable content but they don't ever really share like what that means and so um, at this point you know I'm one of the top social media strategies in the country. And I have learned over the past decade that your audience tells you what's valuable, not what we think is valuable. Sometimes we, we, we are really excited about something and that's what we want to promote or focus on as the business owner. But your audience is like, no, that's not what I want from you. So frequently asked questions, anytime you can answer those is valuable content. Any type of definition or term or explaining a concept is valuable content. Um, anytime you can get someone to think about something or put a smile on their face or give them like a warm and fuzzy um, or offer them a different perspective or even the space to be able to communicate about something, that's valuable content. Um, anytime that you can actually show someone how to like use a product or an offer, valuable content if you can show them how to maintain it care for it i'm um, explaining to them about the supplies or the ingredients or the process that you're using that makes the company special um time lapse videos where people can see how much work is going into it behind the scenes right these things create perceived value anything that falls into the category one of those types of content buckets is going to be valuable content because it's going to establish you as a resource and people like to be educated they like to be informed but they don't like to be sold to and if see people see you as a resource well now you're going to be able to attract lots of clients to you right and then maybe you can tap into the automation world okay they follow so you said an automated dm you know that invites them to join your text message community or your app right and then from there start to cultivate the relationship but that i i think a lot of people you know, kind of get stressed out or give themselves anxiety about what they need to post that's valuable that's going to attract the customer, convert someone, and literally just think, wake up every day and say, how can I help someone, right? How can I help someone in my area? That's really what you're looking to do to put out there for content that's going to cultivate a huge buying base and, you know, convert, you know, convert your audience into buyers. 
Yeah, no, I love what you just said there. And I, and I think especially is a fantastic takeaway for people is that what you said is that the, the content doesn't have to be, you don't have to be writing white papers. You don't even have to be mm -hmm. writing long blog posts, particularly or making long videos. You don't even have to be doing even what we're doing to your point is even if it's something small that's helpful, you know, a tip or 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 whatever that's helpful, as you said, that you can share or as answering a question or offering an insight those are those are things that pretty much anybody can do and it's not that time consuming yeah absolutely um and so i think once people really get that in their heads um and they start right to activate or to execute on that on that perspective and on that thought of this is what i want to put out here right <laughs> and this is this is how i want people to have interactions with me they will find that, you know, there's going to be quite a significant turnaround when it comes to the relations with their customers, um, the way that the brand is viewed and ultimately how many people want to purchase from them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and what do you say to those people maybe who are still a little, you know, reluctant um, to get deeply involved in social media or maybe feel overwhelmed because they think, well, there's so many different platforms and I don't know where I should be. And, you know, should yeah. I be, should I be, should I be leading my sort of segment by going to TikTok because nobody's on TikTok out of my segment or is there nobody on TikTok out of my segment because there's none of our customers are there. <laughs> so what I, what I normally tell people, and I will say this, your customers are on every social media platform. You know, there are hundreds of millions of active users on the big five right now, which would be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and then Snapchat and Pinterest go back and forth um, with one another. Um, and so if you have hundreds of millions of people that are active on there, even if, on, if only if there was like 0.015% of those people were your, were your customer, right? You still have hundreds of thousands of people in any business right can sustain from that um so that that's number one the second thing i would tell people is you pick a platform that you like that you actually genuinely enjoy you don't have to be active on all the platforms i do recommend going and grabbing your name on all of the platforms so that way you have them and if you want to move into it you know you don't have to purchase your name from anyone or anything like that but you find one that you really enjoy that you genuinely like to be on because it's going to be so easy for you to create content it's going to be so easy for you to connect right it's not going to make you feel overwhelmed because you actually like that platform and then when it comes into a second platform that's why I would say let's actually bear down and look at some market research and figure out where our audience hangs out at, right? Because if you're looking for people, um, let's say you're doing like business to business, you know, kind of all commercial interactions, well, you're probably going to want to spend more time on LinkedIn, right? Um, if you're a really visual person and, you know, maybe you're looking for people that are in between the ages of 28 and 45 and they make at least $100,000 a year. Well, a lot of them are hanging out on Instagram, right? And so that's where you're going to go. Um, if you're looking to, you know, be able to reach multiple generations, you may decide I need to be on YouTube, right? Because everyone's there. So the first platform should be the platform that you actually enjoy on social. The second one, let's base it off of research and say where our idea audience or our target consumer, where do they spend the majority of their time? That's going to be your second platform. I think once you build in, um, your third thing is like being intentional and putting together a marketing plan or a system. So, you know, maybe saying I'm going to have five content buckets and all the content is going to fall into one of these five categories, right? Um, I'm going to make sure that I have a tree. So when they click the link in the bio, they can easily find out how to connect with me outside of social media. They can easily see what my, you know, deal of the day is or what my, you know, um, most valuable product is. They can easily see the lead magnet and get to where they want to go, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm very intentional, you know, about collaborating with someone at least once a week or once a month through maybe like we're going to take over each other's Instagram stories or we're going to do a live stream together or maybe invite people into a webinar, right? And being very strategic, collaborating with people that have complementary products and services to yours, right? So that way you guys can grow um, with one another. So number three, basically get a plan and be intentional and stick to your plan. Um, and then the fourth thing that I would say is once we put out an offer, 
right? And we know that it's being received and it, it doesn't have to be a big audience. Maybe if we're just getting consistent sales every week, you get to the point you can get 10 sales a week, then saying, okay, well, well now let me think about putting some money into ads. I think a lot of people start putting money into ads um, too soon instead of focusing on building up organic traffic and organic sales. And this is why when they run ads, their ads don't work. Well, you know, if you couldn't do it before you ran an ad to your smaller audience of people, you darn sure aren't going to be able to be successful, right? Getting in front of thousands of people. Now you're just going to have thousands of people telling you no. Um, So that's what I would, that's what I would suggest to people. So that way they're not overwhelmed. You do not have to be on all of these social media platforms every day at one time, right? And then at that point, once you have your two master, let's consider building a team, right? Which would be number five. So now you can bring in someone that can manage Pinterest for you or LinkedIn or where, wherever it is that you feel like you're weak, right? Bring in a content team that can produce the content and post and do the engagement for you so you don't have to do it. Yeah, no, no, those are fantastic, fantastic points. And and I just, um, our last one I just wanted to ask you about is also, uh, sometimes you see people jump onto social media and then they try to maybe imitate other people or they try to be yeah. something that they're not, right? I mean, maybe they tried to, well, we're going to be, you know, a little bit more upbeat and wacky and zany, but that's <laughs> not your company and that's not the experience people have with your company. So now you've kind of got a clash. Absolutely. My, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of being yourself. You know, even me as an example, I have like over a million followers at this point and I'm a regular girl from the country. Okay. Traditional Southern Belle. I grew up literally on a farm, no street lights, no sidewalks. Um, and I have excelled because I spoke to a specific niche that people were ignoring and I'm able to take, you know, high level concepts when it comes to marketing and business and put it in terminology that my community can understand and interpret right and so i you know i know i'm not everyone's cup of tea but the people that rock with me they rock with me right my vibe has attracted my tribe and so i would say be yourself so that way it's not exhaustive to you and you really can create a customer that's going to become a lifelong customer right someone that you really can be in relationship with it gets exhausted in trying to be someone that you're not yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what was it? Who was it? Oscar Wilde? Who was it who said that? Uh, you know, be yourself because everyone else is taken. That's right. <laughs> One of the best ones. <laughs> Yeah, big, big fan. I actually have a book somewhere of Oscar Wilde quotes because I used to love throwing them out. But anyway, I'm yeah, just entertaining I mean, myself with them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- I think if people looked at themselves as like them, like you, us as individuals, we're the unique selling proposition, right? It's us. <laughs> so <laughs> there's nobody can do you the way you can do you. And there could be like, let's say you bake cakes where well, there's 50 million cake bakers out there, but none of them can bake a cake like you. None of them can tell the story like you, you know, none of them pull the pans and the cakes out of the oven the way you do. So really just saying, you know, what I got is enough and somebody somewhere is going to be into this. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Fantastic. And by the way, um, you know, given the experiences the last few years, uh, growing up on a farm in the country with no street lights and all of that sounds like a pretty good place to be, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave me a lot of advantages because um, all the people I know from the country, we're, we're hard workers, you know, and you don't have a lot. And so you get really creative and you figure out how to make something out of nothing real quick. And so um, I can, you know, run circles around people because when they are missing a little component or they get a road bump or a challenge, they just kind of shut down. And I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this over here. You know, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, yeah. No. <laughs> No, I, I love it. I love it. And uh, um, yeah, I don't know when it shows and it's and it's great because uh, here, uh, I think you can teach people most things. One thing you can teach people is hard work. Unfortunately, yeah. that's something that's either in, in innate or in, inherited or not. Um, listen, Ashley, this has been fantastic. All of Ashley uh, information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, um, so I help people make money with their social media accounts. Um, On my page, I focus tremendously on monetization, mindset, and marketing. Um, You can find me at King Ashley Ann. 
I hang out primarily on Instagram and now TikTok. I, I love TikTok. I just started TikTok in a couple of weeks ago and I love it. Can't get enough of it. Um, but I'm at King Ashley Ann everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, and right now what I'm doing, um, we're tr really trying to make sure we're helping people be equipped, right? For whatever it is that they want to accomplish from a monetization standpoint with social media. So I have all kinds of free marketing classes. I have an Instagram and Facebook ads, cheat sheet, all this really dope stuff for those of you that want to get involved with it. So if you're in the States or Canada, you can text me at 501-285-5899 and text me the word commas with a K. K-O-M-M-A-S to 501-285-8966. If you're outside of the United States or Canada, when you go find me on social media, click the link in my bio and there's going to be something called the Royal Court and you can join that way and I'll just email you all the cool stuff. That's fantastic. Listen, thanks very much. And as you, as all of you will have seen and, and heard over the last while, you know, Ashley Ann uh, really knows what she's talking about. So I would highly encourage you to go check out uh, King Ashley Ann and, and go find, go get those goodies and, and use them to your benefit and look at all the other services that, that she provides as well. So listen, thanks again, Ashley Ann, for joining us today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again really soon. Bye, everybody.